Oh, blimey. Um, that made me jump. everyone um, I'm back out again with the camera back in this wonderful paddock again vlogging tonight we're using the Fuji X-T3s in uh, 4k so I'm hoping you'll see a, a step up in image quality in video quality uh, production value etc um, what am I doing tonight well tonight I'm going to I'm going to photograph tawny owls tonight hopefully uh, fingers crossed um, and instead of triggering the camera manually what I'm going to do this evening is show you how I sometimes um, trigger the camera using sensors um, and most, my most common sensor that I use is a laser trigger so I'm going to show you through those show you the kit tonight show you what I use specifically show you how I set it up and then um, go through the pros and cons and hopefully fingers crossed we'll get some images so yeah I'm really looking forward to showing this one it's been on the cards for a while I've been trying to get some video of tawny owls uh, at night but uh, not been successful yet they, they're in and out before I've even had a chance to video them so tonight purely capturing images show you how I trigger the camera, the setup, and we'll go from there. So fingers crossed we'll get something. So here are the uh, laser triggers. They're by a company called, um, a company called Cactus. Uh, and they're very good. So this is the receiver that you put on the camera. Then you have um, the laser emitter. You have an on-off button here. And you can see it on camera. There's a little laser beam there on the front there. Focusing. So there's the uh, actual laser, and then you have a you have a receiver here, which uh, goes on the other side. So you could basically create a beam between two points, and anything that uh, that breaks that beam triggers the camera basically via this remote sensor. So that's that's them. I think they're not that expensive actually. I think as as uh, sensors go, there I think these are about. So th these two you get basically t as a set. Um, I think these are about hundred pound, and you buy the you buy the uh, receiver separately because you can actually do it wired directly to the camera, but that becomes a bit of a pain. So I've, I've paid I think one hundred and fifty pound for the total actually. And the good thing about these triggers is that you can be very precise about when you want when you want the camera to trigger or where you want on the on the on the post you want the ca the uh, camera to trigger. Whereas other um, passive infrared sensors if a you know if a, if a subject enters the beam which is quite broad then it'll, it'll trigger the camera as well so here you're very 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 precise so it has its pros and it has its cons So here we have the, uh, the laser side of the trigger. So this is the actual physical laser. You can see the red dot there on the front of the uh, laser. Um, it's now pointing at the post. And the trick is now is lining it up with a sensor on the other the sensor on the other side, so you create a continuous beam. So at the moment, it thinks that it's actually being broken. It'd be triggering the camera. So this is where the difficult bit is. And what I tend to do is have a piece of paper or slight piece of paper above the post, and I can see the red dot and then line it up or use the back of your hand. Um, you should never look at these. I mean, so, it's not like it's burning a hole or anything, but uh, you should never look at them, get them in your eyes. So that's one thing to be careful of with these, with these laser triggers. So there's the uh, the red dot, and you can see that on the post there. Now what the trick is now, we have to line it up with the sensor on the other side. So I'm gonna slot log in for a bit now, um, position, the, uh, position the sensor correctly. So the laser is literally just skimming the top of the post. There's the uh, receiver on the other side. Just skim the top of the post so when the bird lands it'll break the beam hopefully trigger the camera and we'll get a photo okay so there's the sensor on the other side and i don't know if you can just see just there is the red dot from the laser on the laser so it's not quite lining up at the moment so it needs to go into this center part of the sensor to, it to trigger the camera 
So let's do that now. And there's an indicator on the other side, which I'll show you now, which shows you when it's lined up or not. Okay, so there's the indicator. You can see the light, the red light on the side there is actually not flashing, but uh, it's just the uh, video making it flash if it is flashing. Um, so when it's red like that, it's not lined up. So the, set, the actual laser is over here. So if we slightly twist, twist the laser, you can see it there. It should go green. I don't know if you can see that there. Get the focus back again. It's just see that the green indicator is now green. That means the lasers are lined up. And we should, if you can see it on camera, I'll put my hand there. I can't see it from the other side. Sorry, come on the other side. Ooh. Put my hand here. It should be a beam of, there it is. See the beam? directly above the post. So when a bird comes to land on here, it should break the beam and trigger the camera. So there's the completed setup. Two laser triggers in the back, two lights, continuous lights at the front, Again, the rotor light nears, which I always use, and that's it. Pretty simple setup. I mean, you can, you can, and probably should uh, move the lasers further apart. They have quite a long range on them, a uh, very long range actually. So you could put them a long way away, so they're nowhere near the post, and try and line them up. But obviously, lining up them becomes a lot more difficult. But yeah, so that's the system. Um, I know the birds are fairly confident here, um, so I don't think those triggers will will put them off. But uh, yeah, we'll see tonight. Okay, so there's the camera and the lens with the with the receiver on top. Um, so uh, basically, you know, fit, it attaches to the uh, to the hot shield on your camera, and then uh, down the side here, connects to your camera there. And that will vary depending on what camera you're using. This is the One DX Mark II. Um, obviously, attached to the lens, and then when you break the sensor, it triggers the camera. I don't know if you can hear that. So that's me breaking the light, breaking the laser beam, and that then fires the camera automatically. So that's it really. Um, as I said, fairly simple setup, and uh, certainly makes, certainly photographing owls at night a lot easier, because you haven't got to sit there with your finger on the, on the shutter, staring at a pose, waiting for something to appear, because they just appear out of nowhere. This gives you the chance to, to sit back and um, and wait for something to show on its own accord. And sometimes if it's pitch black and the shutter suddenly fires, it does make you jump a bit. But uh, apart from that, it's a great setup. So the, uh, the light's fading fast now. So it's the witching hour for bar now. So I'm gonna get my camera, get in the hide and uh, fingers crossed we get something. Hopefully we will tonight. I've got a good feeling about it tonight. It looking, it's, uh, it's uh, looking good. Uh, beautiful evening, the wind's totally dropped. So yeah. Let's do it. Don't know if you can see me, but it's a well, oh, it's an absolutely beautiful evening. It makes a real pleasure to be out there tonight. It's flat calm now. Uh, the light's gone completely now, so I'm gonna struggle to vlog, but look at it, absolutely amazing. So there's the view tonight. Hopefully, we'll have a tawny owl or another owl on top of that post very soon. So I don't know if you can uh, you can see me at all on this. I've got the red light on just to just to try not to be so bright in the, uh, the hide and distract the owls. But uh, so there's a there's a barn owl flying around at the moment. He's uh, been calling quite loudly and there's a few tawny owls calling around the area, so I'm still hopeful we'll see something. It's just a, just a waiting game now. Oh, blimey, um, that made me jump. So we've had a, we've had a tawny owl come in. Um, yeah, I told you before, when I'm, normally when I'm, when I'm uh, doing this type of photography, I'm actually looking out at the post, um, so waiting for the bird to land so I can actually press the shutter. 
But this method, um, you just sit back and wait for the camera to go off and when it's dark and that suddenly flies off at uh, 16 frames a second or 14 frames a second, I think it is on the 1DX, it makes you jump. So uh, yeah, I'll show you that picture in a minute. So there's the uh, back of the camera. One of the first shots we took at the Tornhill this evening. Yeah, really pleased with that, looks great. Uh, looks nice and sharp, everything's good. Nice position on the post, nice pose. Yeah, let's hope we get another one. Well, it's all action tonight. Uh, another tawny owl just came in. Briefest of visit, just quickly broke the beam. It's less settled, broke the beam. Just triggered the camera, but it wasn't the best of shots. Didn't get it in a very good pose, so. But yeah, lots of activity at the moment. There's tawny owls calling everywhere. And I think, yeah, tawny owls breed quite early in the year, so it might be quite an active time for them at the moment. So, uh, yeah, looking good. Well, that was absolutely brilliant. Um, I wasn't expecting it to happen so quite so quickly, but uh, yeah, two hour visits this evening, a couple of pictures, what a way to spend an evening, beautiful. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I was, it was one I was really looking forward to bringing to you, so and I'm glad it worked out and you got to see some the triggers in action and obviously some images, which I'll, I'll leave an image that we took tonight at the end of the video, uh, plus some others that I've taken with the same setup in previous months. So I hope you enjoy those images. Um, I'll also leave a link to the cactus triggers below in the, in the description below so yeah please follow the link if you're more interested in them there's a lot more technical information on their website of course um, I'm not sponsored by them at all so it really is just my my personal opinion on them but there may be better options out there this is just what I use it's a reasonable price to pay for for quite a good setup so so yeah thanks for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, again thanks to all the comments all the subscribers um, it really is appreciated. The channel is uh, growing rapidly and uh, yeah, long may it continue in 2020. So thanks for watching again and enjoy your photography and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.